Hello and welcome ladies and gentlemen to another BlazeCast presentation giving bringing you a game from the Defense 2 tournament. It's uh, another one of the open games for the uh, prior to the matchups actually starting off. So you got a uh, best of one between AL, Absolute Legends, and Ubalis, German team. A little bit lesser known, but they did... Uh, I, mean, I think they might have been a fill-in for this tournament. I don't know if they were originally going to be set up for the tourney, but one way or another they are in now. And... Uh, so they're doing a nice little game for the group stage here uh, against Absolute Legends. Absolute Legends very popular, very, very skilled uh, Australian team that uh, they do play with a little bit of latency. But when they get their act together and just get in on the games, and obviously there's a lot of time zone differences, but the ones I've seen them play, they just perform extremely well and play extremely effectively. Um, so definitely looking forward to them. Uh, first pick coming out for Ubalist and. Uh, They'll be jumping in on banning the, Ar Ur the Darkseer, and the Lycan ban also comes out. Kind of standard stuff there. Um, I'm hoping I'm pronouncing that right, Ubalist. It's a German name, so that's how the vowels generally go, but I might be wrong. Mistaken there. But uh, anyways, uh, just introducing myself real quick. I am Blaze. I am a relatively new caster who's just trying to work on practicing and improving myself to see if I can actually bring some talent to this uh, field. And right now I'm just kind of going through the defense step by step and uh, using that as an opportunity to expand my horizons, to learn a little bit more about the teams competitively, and uh, just kind of work them overall how I perform for you guys. Um, currently looking for a co-caster. Would love to get some co uh, dual casting type situation going on pretty soon because uh, obviously there's I think there's a really good synergy when there's a you know a hype guy and a analytical guy. I'm feeling a little bit more on the analytical side. Uh, jump to that pretty quickly but anyways I guess we'll just focus on the draft at this point we got Darkseer and Chen banned out and Lycan picked up a uh, band out here so um, still a lot of stuff open a lot of bands they do pick off the Broodmother so that's an annoying little thing that the Absolute Legends does not like to deal with they don't want to deal with those pusher carries that can constantly backdoor and frustrate the opportunity to push as five or something like that I don't want to have to have people TPing back to base constantly to defend or having to pick up specific heroes just to counter them like uh uh, Sand King against Broodmother, that kind of thing. Um, but a lot of picks still open. Honestly, there's uh, uh, very high tier pickups. Lashrak, Invoker, Shadow Shaman is still pretty pretty solid there. Um, trying to think who else. I know Rubik's in the queue, but he's not really the biggest deal one way or another. Chaos Knight, that's the other one I'm thinking of. Chaos Knight is still available along with those. And um, uh, I guess that you could also be maybe looking at Enchantress. Never mind, but Enchantress does get banned out. Um, Ubalist, despite first pick, not looking at picking up Chen or Enchantress, making sure that AL doesn't have that option either, because they do have a really good uh, player for that one too. I'm actually trying to remember which one is uh, the player, if it's Godot or Shatan or something, but not a big deal. Um, you're looking at the lineups here. We got Godot, Risk, Musica, Snoopy, and Shatan. Risk, you actually haven't seen on Absolute Legends in a long while. He used to play for them a while back, but uh, I guess he's just joining them for this game specifically. Now we're finally getting into the picks here, Chaos Knight being the last ban, just a nuisance hero, but Nature's Prophet, also forgot to mention him, he's a very high tier. He gets picked off real quick, and there comes the Lushrak, and oh, and the Invoker, so. Power casters all the way, a lot of good stun potential with Lushrak, a lot of good p push potential with his Edict, um, and Invoker having the spell spamming of up to 10 invocation spells. To work with as well as very stable laning. Nature, oh wow, lots of summons coming out from Ubalist here. They've got a Nature's Prophet that has Trents. He can teleport anywhere on the maps, but use those Trents to push down towers really quickly. And the Eidolons can perform that way as well. Um, so using those Eidolons, using those Trents, they can definitely work towards quick towers. And that's going to force um, Lushrak to go for more of an Edict build, or sorry, a Lightning build. Instead of, I mean, he still might max Edict first because it's so great against towers. But overall, he's going to have to pick up quite a few points in the Lightning because of all those creeps that they're going to be bouncing to. Pretty much the more creeps that are near the Shrak while using the Edict, the less effective it's going to be because it hits a random target and it distributes it almost relatively. If uh, RNG is proper, then it should distribute the damage relatively evenly among everything that's nearby. And with that meaning, if you have you know 10 creeps all over you, you're not going to be focusing damage on anything. It's going to lose a lot of that potential. So that's where an yeah, Lightning build will be a lot more effective against these guys. And uh, that might be what um, they're looking at doing. I'm trying to remember who plays. I think Godot plays the Shrak on their team, if I remember correctly there. And then probably see Musica picking up the Invoker. Um, 
I don't know anything about uh, Ubalist, so I can't really call their picks, but Earthshaker is going to be the last pick for Absolute Legends. Earthshaker kind of offering that lane support. Um, they could do a tri lane type thing, or, I mean, they have a lot of different options for um, how they want to land this, um, depending on what carry they pick up. Uh, Windrunner getting picked up on Ubalist. Now, they're definitely going to have um, one of their two first two picks, Nature's Prophet or Enigma in the jungle. A nature prophet does have a lot of flexibility if he can max those transfers and just focus on jungling and then teleporting in to just do a, like a rank one sprout or something and then transition that into a push but it is very mana intensive so he's going to have to carry a lot of clarities around or figure something out along those lines and um or he can definitely lane he still has that option and could go for both nature's prophet and uh enigma are option actually all three of the heroes they've picked up are options for the suicide lane or solo mid so really all three of them can go in either bottom, mid, or um, uh, jungle. And it's probably going to be one, one, and one. It's probably going to be one in each of those locations to thrive and uh, see what they can offer there. Um, so the co-op does get banned out. They don't want to really have... Actually, I was going to say they don't want to uh, AL to pick up a really solid um, middle lane. But honestly, already AL's picked up the Invoker. And that spam caster kind of would put too much, too many eggs in one basket, in my opinion. Uh, getting a co-op and invoker on the same team. There's a lot of magic damage, there's a lot of casting, but you get some silences out there for maybe a Drow Ranger or Death Prophet, even a Night Stalker would be a great pickup, though. Of course, he also likes to offer the solo lane, so I don't see that happening. Um, Lone Druid, another a band from Absolute Legends that I'm not sure exactly if that's even what they were thinking, because you look at the lanes and uh, you've already got two solos and a jungler. That Lone Druid is going to be solo or jungle. I don't think that that's going to really work for what they were looking towards. But it's really interesting pickups. They have so many different things open right now. Brewmaster, Morphling. Um, I mean, you can bring back the Antimage if you feel like it. He's pretty good with the Earthshaker there. Um, Venomancer, Vengeful Spirit. Great support still available. Crystal Maiden, not banned out. Uh, Night Stalker did get banned out there, though. Um, that's kind of towards their mindset of. Uh, I, they continue to ban uh, solos, and I don't know if that's the best option there. I guess uh, they're expecting uh, somebody to try to go suicide top, and they're trying to figure out who they can take off the board there. But also just people that can counter them, because Night Stalker's both of Night Stalker's abilities will interrupt Enigma's black hole, which will frustrate that opportunity, and also can stop things like a Nature Prophet teleport or Windrunner from escaping. Um, so I guess it's just something they didn't want to have to worry about is early game presence. Not really super early game, but once that six minute mark hits, Night Stalker becomes a, just a ganking machine, and there's a concern for them. Um, anyways, it's now up to the band, final band from Absolute Legends, kind of seeing what they're going to leave available, if it's going to be, if they're going to take off a support hero, if or if they're going to try to ban out another carry. Um, they already got the AoE from Enigma. I mean, Sam King could be an option to ban out, but uh, I don't see a Tide really being picked up with this current landing setup, as far as I can see. I mean, I mean, could, I could be wrong. Tide's still a really great pick, but with the lanes, okay, they're going to bet out Shadow Demon. Start, very smart pick. That disruption can screw over a lot of things. I mean, if you land a split earth on somebody and start EDing them down, and suddenly there's uh, they're pulled out, pulled out of action for 2.5 seconds, and then they come up back with three of them, that can disrupt things right there. Um, another thing would be just Earthshake. I mean, it's just a really, it's a disruptive ability, and hence the name Disruption. So that's a very frustrating thing, and he has a whole toolkit of utility abilities that can really, really wreck their landing phase. So that's a good ban, in my opinion, from Absolute Legends. And now it moves over to the pick from Ubalus, what they're going to pick up. It's going to be a support, like a Ventral Spirit, Venno, or CM. Is it going to be hmm, a strength, like a, could pick up a Beastmaster? Could pick up uh, Sand King or Tide, I mentioned, but Sand King probably better for laning than anything, along with the Epicenter Black Hole combo, which can be very destructive. Um, but it really depends if they want to go for the crazy push, like I was talking about. Tinker. And there's that, there's Tinker pickup, very interesting. Um, he has a lot of global presence alongside this Nature Prophet. Nature Prophet um, teleports wherever he wants on the map backdooring, whatever, summons those trends, and Tinker's actually able to boots to travel over to them, and just has this huge amount of global presence, a lot of backdoor destruction, and uh, they can push like crazy with his uh, March to Machines as well. So very, very solid lineup. I'm really curious how they're going to land this, because I have so many flexible heroes, but that Tinker definitely throws it into a weird angle. Um, I mean, they're not going to run a dual jungle. They're going to be definitely situating the tanker somewhere where he can get the most farm possible but really we'll have to wait and see exactly what they want to do with it because right now they have 
really weird lands and I really couldn't call it accurately. They have a lot of different options. Um, but I'm interested to see what AL comes to go up against this. I mean, they could go for a silencer or a silencing uh, semi carry, uh, could pick up a drow, could uh, go for some a ganker. A really hard ganker would be extremely effective against this team, honestly, because if it has any kind of disable to it, it's going to be able to mini uh, stun or uh, mini stun on the uh, that can if they can do that and stop the black hole with whatever their next pickup is, but still remain mobile, then they really have a lot of flexibility with what they're doing. I'm curious. Also, it depends on what uh, invoker build they want to go. I'm going to go for Quaswex or Quas Exhort. Will kind of create a variance as far as if they want to go for that tornado AMP or for counter global. No. Okay. Um, actually, a pickup from AL from the Bounty Hunter. I have seen them pick this up once, and they played it actually extremely effectively. Um, but it really is a kind of a situational pick. If uh, Ubeles is really good about ganking him with a uh, detection, a Bounty Hunter is a very immobile hero that can't really get places very easily unless he's chasing somebody down the track does give movement speed, as well as reducing armor, keeping vision, and giving the entire team gold for kills. So it's an interesting pickup. It is something that could hunt down and frustrate a tinker very effectively. If you can sure you can off a, a Boots of Travel or something like that, or uh, just give uh, keep tabs on where everybody is, um, he can be very effective. The one thing that I don't like about the Bounty Hunter pick, though, is he has absolutely nothing he can do against creeps. I guess they are p assuming that the Echo Slam from Earthshaker, along with the AoE abilities Invoker has, and the Lightning should be able to handle the creeps, but Bounty Hunter, I mean, he doesn't have a single AoE ability. That's a bit of a limitation. Anyways, uh, Ubalist does pick up the Vengeful Spirit, like I was saying, so it's a really good support that can uh, do an effective stun swap, pull Bounty Hunter to a bad situation, or really pull any of the enemy heroes Invoker would be really good to swap as well um, into a situation they don't want to be in, and that's the key there. Um, and if uh, VS has her way, and okay, and Lich has picked up his early game support. So you're probably going to be seeing like Invoker mid. Um, hmm. I could see Bounty Hunter going top lane and kind of suiciding there while they get the Shrak farmed up really quickly with high experience and just controlling the bottom lane from whoever suicides. Um, but it really depends on who they're, if they expect to go mid. If they expect Nature's Prophet to go mid or Tinker to go mid, then they're really going to have to run their dual lane mid, maybe Lashrak and Bounty Hunter in the middle lane. But if they expect like a Windrunner to go middle, and uh, then they want to control the bottom lane, then they're going to send most of their supports on bottom. Anywho, um, it's really it's going to be curious who picks up the lanes and how that works out here. But we'll get started off by calling out who's playing who. We got RMN on the Windrunner. Um, we've got Alex on the Vengeful Spirit. Chill going for the jungle with the four clarities on the Enigma. You got a Soul Ring Tinker, so he might be uh, tri-laning top, They're trying to get that Soul Ring as fast as possible. And you've got Nature's Prophet, who's probably going to be suiciding bottom. That would leave, um, I guess, Windrunner for the middle lane, and then the pseudo tri-lane of Vengeful Spirit and uh, Enigma up top covering the Tinker. Uh, Shatan is actually walking right to them. He's got to be careful. They don't have detection right now that I can see, but he does get stunned out. If there's no there's no shackle, she doesn't have a skill picked up yet. But uh, yeah, so I guess he's gonna be all right right now. But uh, you're looking at uh, yeah, Lich is gonna be supporting him top. It might be a counter tri lane setup, and it depends on where Snoopy wants to move mobilize with that. Uh, and uh, Bounty Hunter Shatan is gonna be careful again. Okay, he pulls up the invis, but he doesn't move far enough and does not disjoint the. Uh, uh, magic missile so he does take another huge chunk of damage and at this point he's just trying to drop the ward and get out of there if he can block that pull off for long enough he's gonna be very effective but uh, they're gonna be looking at counter warding not only this position this here to get the pull going and to deny as much experience as possible but they're also gonna put sentries on his lane and be able to gank him effectively so it looks like a 2-1-2 setup with uh, Godot uh, supporting the bounty hunter top which is great for just denying creeps as much as possible and cover in the lane so that you don't have to worry about uh, the lane being pushed out at all. With enough denies from Lich, you can always keep the lane right over by the tower safe and sound. Um, but his music could cover in mid with an Exhort Invoker lineup. Probably going to be going for a Quas Exhort, building into Forge Spirits against the Windrunner. That's a really interesting matchup. You got uh, a lot of damage coming out from the Invoker, 49 plus 9 right off the bat. But uh, Invo uh, Windrunner has the Windrunner ability to uh, avoid that very effectively. And also, it's just, it, as far as fighting for the last hits, it's going to be, they both have really good animations. It's going to be ba very back and forth there, I think. It's not going to be clear cut one way or another until the ganks start coming in. Hopefully from Nature's Prophet. Nature's Prophet doing the thing where you pull the creeps, 
if you can effectively pull the creeps from behind the tower up this direction back over here you can make the clash back over where you want on the tower like I was saying with the lich denies so two really good suicide well this is suicide situation with the 1v2 where uh, Snoopy and uh, the little Shrek yeah, uh, risk playing the little Shrek starting off with Edict which well, I guess that's what he wants to do but like I was saying if he's up against um, a lot of creeps, creep summons from Nature's Prophet or Enigma it's going to be a lot less effective and he's got to watch that and time it very carefully specifically so they're pulling instead of uh, worrying about the lane where Lich keeps on denying non-stop uh, what they're doing is they're pulling creeps over pulling the neutrals across and uh, they're either double pulling or they're pulling from the lane but one way or another they're doing a lot to uh, cover their creeps up and do as much as they can right now um, now interestingly enough despite this ward right here um, the creeps still spawned at that neutral camp, so I'm guessing this one is just outside of the box that blocks out the uh, ward edge, and that might be a little bit of a mistake by um, Bounty Hunter there, Shadon, uh, trying to drop and cover that. Whether, he try, he, whether or not he's trying to get vision on it or actually block it out, that's the real question for what he's doing. But as far as CS goes, it looks like... Um, actually, I'll line it up so we see how everybody's doing overall. You got Jungle Enigma pulling forward with 11. Got a Lashrak on the bottom lane, very well covered with that Snoopy. Uh, Nature Prophet not really able to do much to stop him right now. And he's actually already putting pressure on the tower with a uh, rank 1 edict and uh, stun, uh, rank 2 stun available. Um, and Martian Machines rank 2 are already starting the push on top lane. So it's really going to be a uh, uh, start off who's going to take down the uh, tier 1 towers first, who's going to provide that pressure, and then they're going to mobilize in other lanes to team fight and coordinate together. Um, so the question is how they're going to do that. Um, Lich still hasn't picked up a skill. I'm not sure if I'm um, why he hasn't started started with his frost blast. There's really nothing else that he would really go for that I can tell. But anyways, um uh, like I was saying with CS, it looks like Invoker has a slight advantage in kills, but that's because Windrunner is focusing on the denies. Denying Invoker is a really great opportunity to um, limit what he can do in the lane because he's such an experienced reliant hero. Being I mean even going from level twenty four to level twenty five helps his skills out. He al he's always very experienced re relevant and that's where he benefits the most is from getting as much EXP as possible. Then de denying a creep uh, will make it so that it does have experience for Invoker, and that's what RMN's trying to accomplish against Musica here is limit how much EXP he can gain and uh, accomplish things that way, rather than focusing on the last test. I mean, it's great to get win on her farm, but denying Invoker is all the more important there. So she's got a seven denies right now. That's really good. Um, other than that, she's got a haste rune. She's covering a. Uh, She's got her, already got her bottle set up, and she's kind of covering the runes very effectively. So I'm wondering if she's going to be ganking with the runes, or if she's just using it to keep lane regen with her ass. Um, but Evokers are, or sorry, Tinkers already picked up the Soul Ring. Uh, Leafs running that uh, quick March Machines build and trying to push, do a lot of pressure on this tower really quickly. Um, Nature's Prophet reporting from behind. They're going for a gank at the, uh, right now. The creeps already waves already pushed out. Gets a sprout onto Godot. He's got a magic missile on him, and with a quick couple more hits, Vengeful Spirit draws first blood against him. They knew there was no chance to take down Shatan. He does have that invis, but uh, with the Nature's Prophet, with uh, oh wow, a lot of damage coming onto um, Enigma, but the bl blind just wore off. And Bounty Hunter was able to get an auto attack off on Enigma to finish him off. Now Snoopy's coming in, costing a Fisher, blocking off an Agent Prophet. He's got nowhere to go and no TP, and he's getting caught out with the uh, Sunstrike, and that'll give Invoker a kill real quick. Bounty Hunter does pick up another kill on, uh, I believe, Vegetable Spirit. Yeah, VS got killed there. Kind of 1v1 action there, and he just came out just a little bit ahead there. But um, really active play already. Uh, I definitely expected that with an Agent Prophet teleporting from behind, being able to turn this uh, tr pseudo tri-lane with Enigma into a 4v2 was a very good situation at first, but with those TPE scrolls and that good response from Absolute Legends, they were able to make sure that not only did they get a couple of hero kills out of it, bringing them up to 3-1, to one, but also keep this tower covered from the, f follow the push that was going to ensue otherwise. Um, belief farming up decently. He's already got a soul ring, going to pick up boots and then move towards those travels. And uh, when he picks those up, he's going to have a lot more potential to farm, push, and pressure in every direction. Uh, in the meantime, uh, despite the nice sun strike picking up a kill, Musica is running a little bit low. Um, he does have his phase boots, um, so he does have mobility advantage, but I'm not sure if Iron Man was just trying to pick off Musica, thinking he was hiding in this area, in these trees here. But one way or another, she's. Uh, just trying to cover that lane pretty well. Uh, Nature Prophet back down to the bottom lane. He does pick up a Basilius to push, uh, get some armor 
on the creeps and himself, and that allows him to push when he wants to very effectively. But a lot of damage coming in on the top, tier 1 top tower with Leaf spamming that march. Eidolon's taking up the tower now, and they're going to take this down pretty easily. No deny but possible for uh, Absolute Legends, and they're going to start off with their first chunk of gold right off the bat. Um, Wand coming out from Windrunner. Good pick up against Musica, the spell spammer. Um, but really, I'm curious to, win, to see when this bounty hunter is really going to start seeing action as far as ganking and trying to be as destructive as possible. You got Lich running level 4, almost has a rank 3 Frost Nova. Um, but uh, Shatan's really. Um, he's relying on his mana right now uh, very uh, very much. Um, Musica did not pick up Bottle right just yet. Invoker doesn't really need it too badly. It definitely helps him, but he mostly stays immobile in the lane, getting that experience, and therefore isn't too reliant on it one way or another. Uh, so that's why uh, Bounty Hunter on Shatan did pick up the uh, bottle, and he's just going to use that to sustain his mana, keep on shurikening, and just stick with that rank 2 Shadow Walk to have near permanent viz when he wants it. In the meantime, Soul Ring on Enigma, Sentry Wards available on Vengeful Spirit. She's there picking up smoke, so they're going to be mobilizing for a smoke gank. Perhaps on Musica and the Invo Invoker in middle lane, we'll see, but we do have a rank 3 Malefice. So only stu two stun ticks, but they do 65 damage each. And then uh, you got, of course, the Magic Missile coming out. No points of W just yet, but a lot of auto attack damage just from the Vengeance Aura. So, um, Magic Missile going to start off. Uh, well, actually, we'll see. I guess they're waiting on his positioning to make sure that he is in a spot where they can do something about it, and they're going to pop Illusion Rune, and Magic Missile comes out, then comes a Malefice immediately after, Power Shot, and Musicus is going to drop down. Not much that he could have done about that. Really good uh, mobilization by Ubalist calling for that kill, and planning out so, thir so thoroughly with the Smoke of Deceits. So that evens up a little bit. They're back up to 4-3. to three. Bounty Hunter with 2 kills, Vengeful Spirit with a couple others. Um, so... Uh, is that the... Did I miss a kill here? Nature Prophet did actually get a kill on the Shrak. That I did not catch, so I'm sorry about that, but uh, apparently it might have just been 1v1, I'm not entirely sure, but uh, Snoopy was not uh, covering him well enough that he was able to actually get dropped down by Pass coming down here, teleporting back down the bottom lane, but we got uh, Enigma with his black hole up and available, ready to rock and roll and cause wreak havoc on this bottom lane. Both heroes are about 50% health or below, and uh, if they can smoke, or actually it's just a, it's just an illusion, so maybe Chill's not heading that direction, maybe they're just making sure that lane's covered, and being there in case they're needed, but Alex's smoke is coming up, and uh, with his rank 2 stun, uh, his Vengeance Aura is pretty much being maxed so that the Eidolons and the uh, Trents from Nature's Prophet will be able to do maximum damage. They're not worried about Wave of Terror because they're not hitting, they're not going to be worried about hitting the creeps, hitting heroes, as much as they are about hitting towers and just trying to do as much damage to these towers really early on. But a nice Fisher by Snoopy and he gets, uh, wow, they're just popping everything out him real quick. Split Earth and then on the Echo Slam, just to finish him off real quick, but now Risk is really low. Even with his Magic Wand, he's going to drop down real quick and Snoopy's in a really bad position. Pops his, uh, wow, he uses his Clarity just to try to get TP out, but, uh, uh, RMN with the haste rune able to get right on him and a nice shackle right onto Godot. One thing from one thing to another, just RMN all over this with Windrunner. Triple kill. Um, starts off with a couple really good kills um, after the Fisher on Nature's Prophet cleans it up nicely and then is able to land a beautiful shackle onto the creep, onto Lich, and take down Godot as well. It's a really nice play by RMN and uh, that's going to give them the really quick early advantage, and they're going to have to do some hard TP pressure if they're going to send this tower. With Fortify down, they're going to have to let it drop. So Nygma gets the last hit on that, while Leaf free farms and gets his travels. So he has Boots of Travels at 9.5 minutes, and he's going to be able to effectively join the team or far go and farm other lanes whenever he freaking wants to with that uh, ultimate. Tinker's ultimate for rearm refreshes his cooldowns of many items as well as all of his abilities, so he's able to Boots of travel. Uh, one as often as of once every few seconds and he can jump back to uh, the fountain and then jump back to uh, lane onto one of the creeps and uh, that'll enable him to have uh, near unlimited regen uh, resources available and therefore uh, just be everywhere at once just about along with nature profit only has one point in the teleportation right now focusing on the tra nature's call trying to get these towers down very quickly they don't want to see this bounty hunter get too farmed up. He's not a really hard carry, but he does scale decently with this Janata crit. He does 225% damage and can be a very scary burst if he does get a lot of CS, but right now you're looking at it, Shatan's only at 22 last hits. I mean, that's kind of miserable when you compare it to like the 
uh, 47, 49. Those teammates have gotten into other lanes. So he's actually gotten the short short end of the stick as far as CS goes. But they're going for a gank on Musica. Gets two ticks from the Malefest. I'm going to get a third one too, along with a magic missile and the power shot. Wow, he messes up his black hole. He doesn't mess it up. What it was, he black holed for just this quick second. Was trying to pick off these two heroes real quick, and it was going to be really good. But this uh, chain frost mini stuns immediately onto. Okay, we have pass. I'll explain it's just second pass is actually in a bad situation. Shatan, uh, missile's coming out, trying to hit Risk and Shatan, uh, just Risk, and uh, he's only got a little bit, but uh, with a rearm, uh, Leaf is able to take off Lich's remaining health. And Snoopy just makes sure they're covered and um, perhaps unable to push further than they already have. Uh, but what happened is uh, Enigma, trying to black hole in this area, he probably caught both, uh, at, he caught at least one, if not two. But unfortunately, he got he started black holing the millisecond that uh, Lich was casting the chain frost. So Godot, I don't think it was reflexes. I think it was just what he was deciding to do to send his ulti out there. But the first target that uh, got a gank, uh, some damage going from Stein. Very beautiful fish are going on, but he's going to do enough damage. And with the sun strike, he might just get out of there despite the sun strike. Uh, Snoopy's going to try to go for her last hit, but it was going to take two more auto attacks, and uh, he wasn't able to do it, but Invoker cleans it up. Music will come in really quick with his high mobility, but now the TP in, and that might have been a mistake. Uh, he gets caught out really quickly, and he drops down himself. So that's uh, now going to enable them to push. Uh, obviously, Enigma got taken off there, so he doesn't is not able to drop the Eidolons down, but everybody else is going to put high pressure on this lane and force uh, Lashrak back with the rockets from Taker. He's going to teleport back to base, regen up a little bit, Ulti again, have the boots to travel up and available, and jump right back up to lane. And they're going to try to finish off this tower and not let it get denied, but Godot is going to be looking for the deny. No, he's not. He knows that Ventral Spirit has too much uh, too much threat presence with that stun and swap. So he's going to let the tower fall, and at this uh, point, they only have two more outer level towers, but they have to make sure they're covered. And I'm not sure if uh, Ubalus is just going to be happy with taking those towers down and being like, okay, well, we got all the gold that's in the main area of the field. Um, we'll leave their tier threes and just focus on uh, taking advantage of the field with items, using map control to inhibit farm, that kind of thing. And that's a strategy they definitely can do after they take those last two tier twos. Or they can try to take a Roshan and get, pick up that Aegis and try to force the issue on the uh, main base there. So we'll see exactly what they end up trying to go with. Looks like a mechanism is going to be built on Enigma. I'll actually just pull up all the items here real quick. Um, but you are looking at... Uh, a lot of farm coming out of the Dire team after all that gold. You got Urn on VS. You've got not that much, surprisingly, on Asia Prophet. Maybe he's banking up. Yeah, he's got 954 currently saved up. And he hasn't used his ulti very much that I've seen. Wrath of Nature, a lot of Nature Prophets like to, at early game, just use it to harass, push it out in general. But he's using it maybe to defend uh, side lanes that are getting pushed out that they don't want to commit a hero to. Um, one way or another, he has not used his ulti recently. And uh, he is still hanging on to it at this point in time. So we'll see exactly what he has in mind for that. But uh, yeah, Mecha being built on the Enigma. I'm not sh uh, I'm sure if they're going to be looking at Pipe to go up against the Lashrak, Lich, and Earthshaker damage. But we'll see shortly. One thing you can definitely tell very clear cut is the benefit of all those towers dropping down and giving them that much benefit right at this very second. It's kind of instant gratification as far as the gold goes. Distributing among the team very effectively, giving everybody 200 plus gold. And if they get the last hit, even better. Um, so you're looking at a huge, huge advantage over 7,000. In a, pretty much, they have a 50% more go, uh, gold than the Radiant does. Uh, absolute legend, playing at two thirds strength compared to the uh, gold advantage that Ubalus has picked up. And along with the fact that they're 11 and 8, and they had a jungler, the uh, Dire team also has that much extensive experience. It was a little shaky at first with the uh, lanes not getting under wraps and as controlled as they need to. Uh, but after a couple, uh, especially with that tower dive. Uh, that was what shot it up towards uh, Absolute Legends direction, but after the fact, ever since then, it's really been in the in uh, Ubles' favor. So Windrunner has a haste rune, is very mobile, is very able to do whatever she wants to. She's actually playing very aggressively in this position here, um, out uh, out of front, uh, pretty much just short of the tier two tower or where it would have been after. But they have taken it down, so there is some damage coming out, um, and then. Fisher has been cast out, but uh, they're just doing so much burst damage on the defensive spirit, and now uh, Pass comes in with an Aegis Prophet, but that might have been a mistake, we'll see, with Chill supporting him, if the uh, Shatan can get out of there, he doesn't have, he has full wand if he can just pop it off, uh, but he is invisible, so he's not really concerned about it. Uh, the long range Tinker Rockets do finish off Lich, and but Windrunner does take out Earthshaker herself, so she was in just a good position to clean up, and uh, 
despite losing that vengeful spirit with some early aggression from lich or shaker and bounty hunter uh everybody else just popped off really quickly and again you can't lose that many heroes against this team because they're going to make you pay make one mistake make lose a hero or two and they're going to be right up on your doorstep as fast as they can be um in return uh music and Shatan trying to push down middle lane but tinker with his auto refresh rockets he actually did rank up his ulti so it's very easy for him oh he's got cold snap on him he has to watch his damage he does have four staff available and he's going to get out of there safely but uh two uh not trents two four spirits are doing some decent damage to tinker um but he does get an urn and he's going to be ex all right despite the sunstorm coming out um, so he is able to effectively cover that. But uh, a lot of Tinkers don't uh, inc uh, rank up their rearm too early because of the fact that 150 mana cost for rank 1 and 150 mana gain from Soul Ring eventually, effectively Soul Ring negates the cost. But what he's doing is ranking up the rearm so that he can fly, fling out those rockets, those heat seeking missiles, as fast as he needs to and be very destructive. He's picked off Lich a couple times and just it's very, very destructive to the enemy team. Especially when they're trying to push a tower or something like that. I mean, March Machines is really good too, so don't cap that out. But specifically, what's been getting him the kills, as he is looking at being uh, 2 0 and 3, has been uh, the heat seeing missiles. And now they're looking at Roshan. They've got the Trents about to come up. They've got Eidolons that can be made from the Trents, which will be happening in no time at all, about 8 seconds. And then uh, they're going to be able to easily take him down. Um, Vincent Spirit taking down his armor a little bit. A little noisy, sorry. The March Machines does like to play their music, but uh, gonna take down Roshan real quick, and Tinker's probably, get, yep, picks up the Aegis, and he's gonna be all set there. Um, and unfortunately, just with the counter reward and sentry action, uh, Absolute Legends had no idea that was going on, and it kinda cost them that Roshan right there, and they didn't even push a tower during that time period, so that's very frustrating. Shatan gets shackled. Um, they do, they did have some kind of vision on him, but he do, it does look like he got his Shadow Walk off in time, so he did get shackled, he did get Malefist, but he is gonna be alright and get out of there. Um, but they did have a ward on the high ground, and that's why they caught him off guard. But uh, now uh, Musica is looking at top lane, was trying to push it out, but Leaf's right back there. It's interesting, they're actually playing a kind of a defensive tanker, trying to cover each and every one of their towers as effectively as they need to. Um, he has a four staff for mobility, making sure he pulls himself out of bad situations like a Lich Nova, um, like a, um, actually Snoopy coming in on the... Enigma, but he does get a Malthus done, that long uh, cast time on the Fisher. but he does pull a black hole, pulling two in, but a quick go dot ultimate, and Earthshaker Echo Slam coming out right after the fact. They do have a pipe up, but they, they are just dropping really fast with that bouncing around Chain Frost. They're not going to be able to hold up against it very long, especially without the uh, uh, Echo, or black hole, but now uh, Windrun's about to fall short, and the Cold Snap, along with uh, dam burst damage from Bounty Hunter Shatan, is going to finish off the Windrunner, but now they only have those two left all by themselves, and they have to watch out for any kind of uh, support continuing from the other heroes. Um, yeah, this, so they do have a mech, and did, they picked up a, a pipe on somebody here. I'm not sure who was able to finish that off. Uh, Windrunner actually got the farm for middle lane, just enough to uh, finish off that pipe, which is a very early pipe. 18 minutes in, I mean, I know they've taken a lot of towers, but that's a very expensive item to pick up. So, kudos to uh, RMN for farming that up very effectively. He's 6-1-4, and four, so he has taken a, he got a triple kill earlier, so he did get a lot of farm along with the 75 CS he took from the lanes. But uh, one way or another, that is very good. Uh, let's look at the GPM real quick. 425, easily topping it out, farming very effectively, compared to the 355 on Invoker, and only 281 for a Bounty Hunter. That's not something you want to see on a Bounty Hunter. His ultimate gives him 150 gold uh, bonus for a kill on a uh, target that's tracked. So he really should be getting that bonus gold, but if you're looking at Shatan's KDA, he's actually uh, not doing too hot. He's running 313, which is okay, but... For a bounty hunter, you're trying you're trying to use that burst damage you have. You're trying to apply that gank pressure, and uh, it's just not happening for him right now. He's having to play defensively. He's worried left and right about what's gonna be pick trying to pick him off next, and that's causing a lot of problems. Nice counter push from uh, Invoker, pulling out that uh, meatball, the uh, chaos meteor, um, but it and that does uh, destroy a lot of creeps right there. Could pull out the creep wave, so that's not a big deal. Um, Lashrak not even deciding to rank his pulse nova just yet. He'll wait one more point in split earth, and then. So he's going 4-4-4, trying to get a little bit of everything as far as his magic damage before he pulls out that Pulse Nova. He knows he doesn't have the mana to support it, and he's just going to focus on whatever he can actually get across, which is these three spells. Um, Godot has been sick on his ultimate so far. I mean, not only bouncing really well in the jungle and doing a lot of damage there, even against the pipe, but um, also the fact that he's cut off not one, but two black holes already. Black hole goes in, picks off two people uh, really quickly, but instantaneously... 
go down on the ball with the chain frost, breaking that up really quickly. So nice play by, extremely nice play by him, uh, and making sure that these team fights, though they have been losing the team fights, they're not. It's not a crushing defeat. We're getting a couple people out. You're still getting some kills for it. And without Godot's uh, Chain Frost, I think that Black Hole, the Black Hole will be assigning defeat for them pretty quickly. So, he's performing very admirably, and uh, he's getting a lot out of it. Actually, Invoker picking up the mech as a support item. I'm not sure what Lich is going for. He's just going, he doesn't have any gold right now at all. He's just kind of going for whatever he can afford. Um, but, like I was saying, the build for Musica, he put four points in Quaz to get that double forge spirit up. And then uh, he's just maxing out Exorc otherwise for meteor damage, along with Sunstrike damage potential. He does that four staff, have that four staff for mobility. Does not stop rockets from hitting you, but it um, can get you out of a bad situation, like eventual spirit stun coming at you. You can see stuff like that coming, and pull yourself out of a bad spot. Same with uh, the sprout, which is only rank one from Nature's Prophet. He can jump itself out of that as well, or over top of an Earthshaker Fisher if they coordinate it well. So that'd be cool. Um, but there's a lot of action going on bottom lane. Shatan has dust on him, and he was almost blocked in by the Tinker, but it was able to narrowly escape by. But he is, again, doesn't have any increased movement speed. He has to pop his drum just to get out of there. And uh, the, dust, the, the dust does fade, and he pops his abyss. So assuming that they don't have any other detection, he'll be all right. Um, and he's back, coming back towards middle. Um, Radiant does take that down with the uh, Dire Creep. So, no, not the Dire Creep. The uh, Radiant siege creep that happens to be labeled dire's angel for some reason fun bugs fun bugs anyways music guy getting in a bad situation but that four staff like i was saying pulling him out uh, if he had been uh stun swapped or sprouted there or sprout to set up the former uh, spells could have been in a really bad situation but he was able to get out of there nicely and is able to take part in counter pushing and the next team fight Ping your draw, just in and out, in and out, looking for a scythe of ice now. Able to re rearm that and sheep stick people repeatedly over and over and over as long as he has mana. Put a blink dagger helmet on Earthshaker, and that's exactly what AL needs to stay in this game. If you get a good Earthshaker, uh, blink dagger uh, ultimate, his echo slimes have been impeccable so far without the uh, blink dagger, so I, I'm going to love to see what uh, he can, Snoopy can do with him. He's their initiator. And he has a lot of potential to, especially with this uh, this lineup, the uh, the nature's call trends. You got the Eidolons that uh, get picked up by the uh, Enigma, and every single one of those can echo a slam. That's the hence the name of the ability. But pretty much they do 40 damage every for every creep that he hits. Um, it does 40 damage to bonus damage to everything else that was hit, and so it just completely obliterates somebody if they're stacked on top of creeps and. Plenty of creeps are around here that's hard not to be stacked on them as the uh, Ubalus team tries to come through. So, next push attempt, if their uh, creeps aren't all by themselves, if some, even, somebody even like Nature Prophet is standing on top of them, her sugar you just compared, almost one shot them with the amount of damage. At rank 2, it'll be a lot closer to that. Rank 1 is not as effective, but still can provide a lot of pain. And so, we're going to be looking for some big echoes from Snoopy if they're going to hold on to this game, because like we've been seeing, it's all downhill right now, going for... I mean, they're plateauing out on the gold earned, but they still have the immense advantage, and they're trying to take advantage of it there. Um, Invoker's got a lot of... Almost maxed out Exhort here. Only a couple more points he needs to put in that, and at level 15, and he's going to be all set there. Uh, Winner, actually. Our man has to watch herself. Shatan doing a little bit of slow action on her. She does get cold snapped out. She is immune to... Uh, uh, physical auto attacks, but her wind run just ran out, and despite her high mobility, Shatan with that track she'll be faster. But now they're worried about retaliation. They know Alex. They might have seen Alex real quick, and they know that the tower's right here. So anybody and their mother can uh, TP up to the top lane and cover that. And that's one thing that uh, Ubalus has a huge advantage of is they still have two tier one towers and a tier two tower. Not only is that gold that isn't in the pocket of Absolute Legends, but also allows. Uh, their team to mobilize, teleport wherever they need to. Not only can Nature's Prophet uh, teleport um, to wherever he wants on the map, not only can uh, BOT Tinker teleport to where, anywhere there's creeps, but uh, now uh, with those towers up you can still have plenty of support from any of the other remaining heroes. A couple TP scrolls on Enigma there. Um, so he does have his rank 2 black uh, hole up and available if he does decide to use it. He's looking for that BKB. But one thing that you got to remember, I just, just went into a huge amount of detail about Godot's uh, Chain Frost. That mini stun, as simple, small as it seems, that mini stun they keep on applying to him, go penetrates the BKB. So even if an uh, Enigma picks up a huge, amazing four-person BKB black hole, 
he still can get ultied by Godot and get knocked out of it instantaneously. And uh, that's one thing where, unfortunately, you got to get some like a Lincolns if you're going to stop prevent that, and that's just way too much money to put into it, especially after he's already gotten a uh, mech and he doesn't have his Blink Dagger. So most likely what he's going to be doing is just getting that BKB and trying to make sure that whenever he ulties, either uh, the Chain Frost is on cooldown, nice initiation coming in for Staff and going on Windrunner really quickly, nothing you can do about that, just stun, 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 Fisher, really just wipes the floor with him right off the back, holds snap and everything applied to him to provide the pressure. Tinker split push in middle lane, they gotta watch that a little bit, but he doesn't have that much damage, damage to towers, so really it's just gonna be creep damage. Um, meanwhile, they're just looking maybe to trade top, just try to take down tier 1 and just let their tier 3 take a little bit of damage, not too much, and uh, apply the pressure there. But uh, there is 3 covering it with the Ubalist mobile team ready to go. Um, I was uh, saying along those lines with, uh, yeah, Enigma is probably what he's going to be doing, his new game plan, is literally just always trying to catch out Godot, get a mouth to stun maybe on him, and then get a black hole on him and whoever's around him, because that's what, if he can BKB and apply, get the Godot in the black hole, at that point there's nothing that Absolute Legends can do to stop it. So he's really got to focus on either making sure that Chain Frost is on cooldown, or getting him in the ulti. And that's, uh, that's where the uh, game plan for Chill has uh, got to be at right now. I mean, while Nature Prophet just farming it up, I uh, had Katie up for a while, but you're looking at uh, creep kills. Nature Prophet only at 100 and at 27 minutes in, he's usually, no, I wouldn't say double that, but he's usually a lot more, generally speaking. Um, I'm not sure if they were checking if Roshan was up with the Sunstrike or not, but um, they do got a dust. They were trying to pick off your time. He does get dusted, but he's just too quick out of there. I'm really loving this drum of Endurance pickup on him. Gives him that mobility that he kind of lacks, because most uh, Invis heroes uh, do have um, a, some kind of increased movement speed with their Invis, but uh, Bounty Hunter is one of those that actually lacks a little bit. So the drum pickup, along with his treads, makes sure that he is sitting at a good mo movement speed that he can pop to get even t another 10% boost. They're doing another big pressure on Roshan, and although they're pushing tier 1, and although they're going to do a nice amount of damage to this tower, and probably be able to finish it off, tier 1 tower is nothing against Roshan's uh, benefit and gold experience and the second life from the Aegis. Now they're looking at, actually, they're going to try to, no, actually he stops at TP scroll, he's going to be looking at maybe teleporting back home, he pops a soul ring, heads back home, he's going to get a little bit more uh, mana up before he's ready to try to take on hey, all, all all of them 1v5 as he was about to jump into um but yeah Armin, i'm um, looking for a sheep stick possibly now with that void stone but she is far from it as far as farm we'll have to see maybe is that ultimate orb i can't tell whose it is but most likely it's gonna be wind runners seeing as uh enigma was going for the bkb and uh at that point she's only 2700 off of it but chatan caught picking up on the rmn uh, he does get his Windrun off, but just a lot of magic damage coming out. does get a uh, heal, for, and he does have Pipe Up available now. He does Wand out of it. He has Bottle coming out, but they're transitioning the fight to Alex. A lot of damage on uh, Vengeful Spirit there. Doesn't have a swap anymore, but a Black Hole going on too. Immediately after, Godot pulls out that uh, Chain Frost on the Black Hole, and just like I was saying, he couldn't handle him. He couldn't keep, keep him where he wanted him. And uh, it, Tinker's not even going to be able to take down Lich, or Lashrak. So they're going to go one for one. Very, very... Uh, back and forth team fight really quick. Everybody splitting out in all these other different directions. Windrunner did get caught out going south here by one or two heroes, but um, Bounty Hunter being the only casualty despite his BKB. Um, really nice black hole from, uh, was it a chill? He uh, got Musica in there along with one other hero, I think Earthshaker, and had the BKB up. And he's like, Yeah, I got these guys, but Godot's like, I got you, man. I got you covered. That's what Lich has always been saving his ultimate for, and that's exactly how you need to use it in this situation. Otherwise, that uh, BKB Enigma is just going to be all over your team. Um, Nature's Prophet making up for lost time on his last hits. He does have a Necronomic on 3, which is great for detecting on the Bounty Hunter. So he doesn't even need Gem. He just needs to know where he's at, pop the uh, Necro Dominions, and at that point he will be able to detect them and chase after them, mana burn them, do a bonus damage to them. And that's why he's ranking up the Sprout now. Is uh, I don't believe Bounty Hunter has anything. No, he has no way of getting out of the Sprout. So if you can Sprout him in with the Necro Minions, it's going to really rain his parade. He does have a haste right now, so that will give him a little bit of mobility there. But still, having a hard time keeping up in farm. He has no Desolator. He has no. didn't even bother go with Medallion. So it's going to be... Hard press for him to actually do an, uh, as much burst as he needs to be, but he is uh, flanking really nicely on Alex here, Invincible Spirit. There is RMN and uh, Enigma Chill coming in, 
Uh, nice shackle on Godot. He does take a really big burst of damage here. He does not have his mech available, but uh, the burst from Shatan, too much. Now Nature Prophet TP'd in, but Echo Slam going on the Necro Minions and does take out a, uh, a lot of damage on the enemy team, but it does finish off Earthshaker and Lich, who got caught in that Sprout, and now they're going to be looking to push. Even with uh, Shatan, Shatan can do a lot of damage and maybe even take down this Nature Prophet by himself, but nobody else is going to be in jeopardy, and they're going to use that as an opportunity to just take down as much as they can. They still have two lives on the Tinker, and they're going to use them as aggressively and effectively as they can. So, uh, Musica, lining up his Meteor, uh, probably a Deafening Blast shortly after that, um, and just trying to make sure that he can counter push as best as he can. Tinker coming back in, full mana, ready to rock and roll. So, uh, Musica does pull out that Meteor, hits a lot of creeps here, burning them all down really quickly, and with a Deafening Blast, he should be able to finish pretty much all of them off once he invokes that up. But he actually invoked Meteor, which he already had, so that's a little bit weird to me, but, uh, Oh no, he invokes Fort Spirit, so he's using those as a creep to counter push. He needs to, they did the Fortify, now they need to be looking for a Deny, but Musica does get shackled. Uh, Blink, dag Blink from uh, Snoopy doing a really nice block in on the Fisher onto uh, Nature Prophet. He gets picked off. Now, BKB popped on Shatan. They're doing a lot of damage to Tinker. He does have this Aegis still available, but uh, Scythe of Vice is nothing against the BKB, and he's going to be brought down. Now, uh, he's going to be coming back in a few seconds, but RMN on the win run is trying to avoid as much damage as possible. Pulse Nova rank 2. They're going to be focusing on the Risk now. And uh, nice ultimate comes coming across. He does have the black hole available, does catch Musica, does catch Snoopy, and the Chain Frost is on cooldown, but he's the only one there. He's the only one left, and he gets finished off, picked off. But uh, Tink uh, Shatan a little bit in over his head. Buyback's coming out. Tinker um, back in the action. Bounty Hunter coming back in the action. Uh, Stun from Ventral Spirit on Musica. He's dropping really low, and so is Blitzrack. They just got to finish him off. Rockets, double kill, triple kill, and now they're going to be looking, trying to finish these people off, clean it up, and... Uh, Shatan's out of his element. He doesn't have BKB available. They do have uh, maybe Necrominion. They do have uh, Dust on him, but he's going to be looking for a drum in just a second. Uh, Nature Prophet looking for a Sprout. If he can manage the Sprout, he does. He's only got a few seconds left on Dust on him, though they have to have some other detection or just burst him down hard. And Necrominion's come out, and he's going to drop down too. Snoopy, Earthshaker trying to get him out of the bad situation, but now he is the one that's in the bad situation. He is almost Earn Charge taking off Blink Dagger, and they're going to finish him off with the last auto attack from Tinker. Wow, just wow. Earthshaker buyback too. They had lots of gold saved up. They were trying to make sure that they won the next team fight, but they had a really bad situation right now. They have to have an amazing Echo Slam coming in. He does have the Blink Dagger available. He's going to be blinking in. Uh, Swap goes come out onto the track, but he's. And there comes Snoopy with a big Echo Slam, and there's uh, Tinker, really ha older Half Life, but uh, Venture Player does get picked off. She did swap in way too aggressively there, and the team wasn't able to capitalize it from the uh, Earthshaker coming in. So now they are looking at just trying to hold their towers as much as possible. Lots of march, march machines coming out, but they come in to the west, and uh, they're not going to be able to apply enough pressure. The tower does lose a huge chunk of HP, down to one-third health from what it was. I'm going to take a quick sip of water from right here. That was a very intense fight. But falling back, all said and done, a lot of buybacks, a lot of gold used, just really all over the place. Aegis did pop off. Roshan should be in another like four or five minutes. But uh, the, all said and done, this game is Defense of the Ancients, and they're really opting to try to take out these racks here. And uh, they only were able to take two-thirds of a tower. So it was favorable as far as the overall result, but it wasn't enough as much as they needed. Um, one thing they did uh, t cost Bounty Hunter not only a number of Black King Bar charges, but they all, I mean, he's not using charges. Obviously, it's not a charge system for that, but it's uh, every time he uses it, it's going to be lesser duration. Anywho, he did also use his BKB up, so his gold is hurting. The fact they only had 324 GPM, I'm assuming that's not calculating his buyback, but he bought back right after that. He's hurting on gold. Now, uh, they do have to look out pass, and uh, Leaf have to be looking out in their position. If uh, Snoopy did ca catch him out, he could have blinked and stunned on top of him and caused a lot of... He is looking for the Fisher, but uh, Sprout comes out, and he's not going to have the vision in order to shirk him. He wishes he did. He wishes he had the track on him, but he does not have that available. They might find the Necrominions, but he's going to get out of there safely. And RMN, popping the Illusions, has to get out of Dodge as well. Actually, looking for damage on the Musica. He does get the Sheep off. He's going to be looking for the Shackle right here. Perfect Shackle lineup, but oh well, no big deal. He gets him on the tree, and Tinker TPing in with Boots Travel to do that much burst damage to nuke him down. And now they have four, and they're going to be looking to push maybe middle lane. Um, plenty of time on Roshan, so not going to be their priority there, but Invoker does buy back, so Musica gets picked off and spends his remaining gold. He was working on his uh, Sheep Stick, but he just had to spend... Uh, over a thousand gold just to get back in the game. Um, so that is going to delay, if not inhibit him from getting a sheep stick at any point in this game, depending on how long it lasts. And uh, right now, still looking at Ubalus' direction. 
Um, I'm not saying that it's lost for Hale. I mean, if any team can come back from it, these guys can. Um, but they really need to keep on focusing on big Echo Slams followed by big Chain Frost, stopping that Enigma ulti, etc., etc. So, uh, they did really well. They held their own last team fight despite all the buybacks, and uh, they need to make sure that they don't they don't lose a single one of these racks because once that starts happening, the snowball steamroll just starts pulling pulling them out, and uh, it's going to be hard pressed to do anything less. Um, but yeah, now they're just kind of farming up, counter pushing, pushing. Tinker showing his mobility, back to fountain, back to uh, lane, back to fountain, back to lane. Actually, not even have to see too much of the fountain. This size of ice does bring him up to 14 regen, and he still has that soul ring available, so he's not even having to just jump to fountain as much as he needs to. Mostly just march the machines on the lane. Pick a different lane, march the machines that. Farm up some jungle, farm up, do whatever you need to. He just has so much mobility, so much versatility, and he can even farm ancients with those that march, the physical damage. Um, and, well, VS takes the XP. But uh, overall, what you're looking at as far as levels, amazing EXP gain right now. The level 19 on both Tinker and Windrunner. Um, I know that Windrunner was solo, but Tinker did have some support in his lane, yet he was able to get so much experience, just get so, uh, such farm from these uh, hero kills here. And that's uh, really just showing for him right now. He's just, he's got so much experience. Experience per minute, 520 and 519, very high amounts for a game like this. And in 37 minutes, he's already working on level 19. So that's uh, really nice. There's time going in. He does have Haste Rune popped and available, but they did use Necromanians. They just popped their Necronomicon, which is going to be actually 80 second cooldown, um, unless they use it to their advantage now. It's kind of a waste, but he does get a four staff sheep, but it's going to be a fast, fast pick because that's Haste Rune. You can't slow him down, and he's just going to keep rocking and rolling. So he's uh, in a safe position, and these Necromanians only have 14 seconds left on him, and that's going to. Uh, caused them at least for a very short time period. Um, Four Spirits just kind of counter pushing the lane. Uh, they might actually do a chunk of damage to Musica. I'm mean, okay, I actually didn't know how the damage distributed. Um, pretty much when they kill the Necromunion, it does a true damage nuke to uh, whoever killed it, but it doesn't do it to the hero who possesses the controlled minion. It just killed the Forge Spirit, which he's happy to get the gold from it and not even have to worry about it. So that's what he, why he popped the Forge Spirit and had it focused on the melee Necromunion. He didn't have to take the burst of damage, but he was able to benefit from the gold. So, note to self, summons, awesome against Necromanians. Summons versus summons, Pokemon battle. Anyway, Shatan gets picked off, he does get scythed out, and a uh, big Echo Slam kitchen up to three heroes, but they do pop the pipe immediately after, and it's going to be nothing but pain for Absolute Legends. Really nice Echo, but nothing to follow it up on. Nobody else was there, so it was a little bit of a mistake. To He got the nice circle, he really he hit a lot of people, but when your team isn't available to follow up on it, it's nothing but a little print break of damage for what they got. They smoked up. I don't know exactly what they plan on doing if they're looking to Roshan, most likely. Um, they don't know about the wards that uh, AL has, but they do have one ward available right there. Um, but they're looking to smoke, walk right by the uh, ward, and go unseen into Roshan. AL's probably got to like, suspect this, since they just interrupted one of their big pushes to uh, go, in, go into smoke, going to nowhere. But uh, right now, they don't have any way of directly knowing, guaranteed, that they are doing Roshan. And doing it very quickly, I might add, with all these summons, with all this physical auto-attack damage. He's, do, they do the Sun Shrek, they know he's going to do it, but uh, Cheese and Aegis in the hands of Ubalist. That's the third Roshan they've been able to take down with no contest whatsoever. And uh, that's, that just shows how much map control they have and how much pressure is really on the Absolute Legend teams right now. So I finish for profit. So he's got really good. He's picking up his GPM back to where we usually see a profit because he is very able to farm. But uh, I guess he's saving his ultimate for team fights. I guess that's really the main thing that he's not using it for. Usually you see these profits with only a 60 second cooldown. He, they generally use their ultimate to farm like mad and just get so many last hits. But uh, he wants to be ready for a team fight at any time and he wants to make sure that he can do that damage to the opponent. So he's generally saving it and uh, making sure that he doesn't have to worry about it. No, it's cool then or anything like that. Lashrak opted for a BKB. He's gonna pick that up as soon as he can. He has 1600, so he's gonna be looking at uh, 900 more gold, and he can pick that up if he wants to sacrifice his potential to buyback. His buyback is ready, and they uh, have a lot of pressure coming in the top lane. Shatan and Earthshaker did respawn from that encounter, uh, but now they got to look at uh, next steam fight. Fisher and Meteor trying to pull him off, but actually the Fisher directly creeps away from the Meteor, so he's going to have to use Deafening Blast Tornado in order to counter push as much as he is. And they're just putting a lot of damage from this ultimate focus fire onto the uh, tower here. Tier, tier, 
three top, and they're going to take it down really quickly. Uh, does it do a good split earth and possibly a cold snap coming in on Woodrunner? She does get swapped out by the Ventral Spirit, but now cold snap on the Ventral Spirit with some shuriken damage. But they're going to be unhindered. They got earned charges that can heal right back up, and uh, about 16 seconds from now, be right on the tower. But uh, Tinker. Screw 16 seconds going in now. A lot of rocket damage, a lot of burst damage going on to the Earthshaker. Uh, Enigma taking him down with the Malefice and a nice black hole just making sure fin Risk is finished off. Yeah, Godot does use the ulti to stop the black hole, but the guy he's pulling out is already dead. Four staff coming out from Taker trying to pull away from the Shatan. But now he's trapped in trees. He's got nowhere to go. Necrominion's covering the Invis effect, and he's taken out too. Uh, power. Shoot, Shackle Shot goes wide, but Aegis is coming out for Tinker. Right back up that Aegis, and that's going to be GG shortly. Uh, just too much uh, advantage, too much gold, too much experience they've lost. And now they have three people down. They can rotate, take the middle lane, whatever they want to do. But uh, uh, Perma Sheep going. He's kind of playing with Godot at this point, just doing the amount of damage that he can to him while uh, keeping him completely disabled. Little Piglet, and uh, a little bit of damage coming from Musica with that Cold Snap and high Exhort auto attack damage. But uh, Vessel Spirit keeps him covered. He's going to TP back, and guess what? Be right back in the fray in no time at all. So they do take down mid, and they might be looking for even bottom. If they take bottom, it's obvious GG. There's no, no coming back from those mega creeps there. They're going to try to hold it, but they got. I mean, Lashrak did have buyback. I'm actually. No, he uh, apparently did the buyback and died twice, so that's why his bolt stands down to rake two. I didn't catch that buyback on the Shrek, but now Vengeful Spirit doing some pressure on Godot. He has nothing but a mech, and that was. or Magic Wand, sorry, and uh, he's going to be. Uh, caught out there. Leaf does get caught out, but he's going to buy back very shortly, and he's going to teleport right back in to uh, continue the pressure. So GG called by Absolute Legends. Very well played by Ubalist. Haven't seen them play before, like I said, but uh, they use their team's benefits with that global control, that global mobility, and that high pressure push in the early game. Used it perfectly. Just impeccable play there. I mean, they did take a couple casualties with all their encounters, but overall they played extremely well, and uh, kudos to them. They definitely deserve this win. So, uh, yeah, AL, an amazing team as well, but they did not pull it off. They did just had too much pressure. You can see the game's been downhill from them from the start, and they just weren't able to come back from it. They didn't have the late-game carry for anything, and they only reached 42 minutes anyways, so I don't even know if that would have helped them. But the Bounty Hunter didn't get the kills he needed to, running a four a kill, six assist. Really, uh, that's just, it's uh, not enough. So, anyways, scoreboard's going to come up. Uh, thanks for watching guys. Awesome game. Uh, glad to be able to cast it and uh, you're probably over on my YouTube channel right now, Blaze Casting. Uh, if you're not, that's that's the YouTube channel I have and you can check it out. But just please uh, leave some feedback for me uh, in the comments section below. Just any way I can improve or anything I need to work on or hey, a good job is always fun to hear too. Anyways, uh, really fun game to, uh, game to watch. Um, and a couple things I noticed is that the Lich didn't really get off his feet as far as experience goes. Um, only having 200 experience per minute sitting at level 12 compared to the almost 600 that Tinker had getting level 22 in 42 freaking minutes. Nice, just a black and white difference between those uh, the carry from the Dire and the support from the Radiant. I guess you can say that about most games, but it was very well reflected in the three sheep sticks picked up by Ubalist here. So much disable, and with the only BKB being possessed by the Bounty Hunter, who was limited by things like Sprout and running for his life half the freaking time, uh, it really was uh, a very difficult spot for the Radiant team to be in. Anyways, that's my synopsis there. Very well played, Ubalist, and uh, good game well played. Thanks, guys.